year 2022. India will roll out its first bullet train and will join the elite rank of countries. To complete this Herculean task, within a span of four years, National High Speed Rail Corporation Limited and its vendors are working with latest cutting-edge technologies to make this project a stunning success. It's an iconic project. The main crux of the project is to complete the project as fast as possible. And to do that, you have to start the construction activity at the earliest. For doing that, you have to collect the data, survey data, information from the field as early as possible. Without that, the construction activity would be delayed. But to start the survey, many challenges had to be overcome. RIDES is a multidisciplinary consultancy organization under Ministry of Railways. Over the years, we have executed many milestone projects. Now we have been entrusted with the task of final location survey and geotech investigations by National High Speed Rail Corporation. This is a greenfield project spread over 508 kilometers with a mix of terrain. We have heavily populated areas like Mumbai, Ahmedabad, Badodra. We have ghat sections, we have creeks. Due to sometimes due to local issues, we are not able to carry out surveys by entering that area. For a project like this, it is not an easy task to carry out survey and investigation through manual techniques. To overcome the survey challenges and to give the bullet train a lightning start, light detection and ranging or LIDAR using lasers mounted on helicopters was chosen due to its multiple benefits. There are other technologies, competing technologies. We have the satellite-based imageries available. That can give you an accuracy of one and a half to two meter. You have the drone surveys, which give you an accuracy of about three times the uh, camera resolution. Then we have the LiDAR technology, where the accuracies can be of the order of 10 to 15 centimeter. For a bullet train project, the accuracy requirements demanded that we go for the best. Moreover, with LiDAR, the kind of manual intervention that is required for the traditional surveys, they are not there. Besides highly accurate data, aerial LiDAR also provides data below forest and vegetation cover, whereas satellite and UAV-based imagery surveys fail to do so. The superior ability of aerial LiDAR to generate an accurate bare earth 3D terrain model devoid of foliage and other obstructions along with other benefits helped NHSRCL to zero down on aerial LiDAR technology over other remote sensing technologies. To undertake the aerial LiDAR survey, a capable vendor was required. Although LiDAR looked promising, we could not afford to entrust this task especially the LiDAR survey task, to an inexperienced player. Therefore, we chose an agency who had extensive experience in this field and who was well equipped. GeoNo, an experienced company which had started from IIT Kanpur, was entrusted with undertaking the aerial LiDAR survey. But before the survey could begin, two important activities had to be undertaken. These were taking permissions from DGCA and Ministry of Defense and establishment of a robust ground control network to ensure required accuracies. Once you get the work order, the very first thing that we do in India is we apply for the permissions of that area. While permissions were being taken, the ground team started the ground control. In the study area, the ground team identified the available Survey of India benchmarks. These benchmarks were used for establishing the vertical control through the process of double tertiary leveling. Horizontal control was established through a triangulated network of 64 master control points. This was further densified through 232 secondary control points. Out of these 232 secondary control points, 102 points were used as target points to be used for checking the accuracy of the data. As LiDAR does not get returns below water, the ground team also undertook hydrology survey for river areas. 
With the permissions in place and the ground control completed, the actual data capture with aerial LiDAR sensors fitted in the helicopter started. And we use the Eurocopter in this case. Then we have a way to fit our system, our LiDAR, our camera, IMU and the GPS all along with the computer in a Eurocopter. LiDAR works on the principle of light detection and ranging where LiDAR scanners scan the ground by firing laser pulses as the helicopter flies. As you know the procedure for collecting the LiDAR data is very simple because we are flying the LiDAR, we have got the laser scanner there which is firing the laser pulse and wherever it is hitting it comes back to you, you measure time of travel as well as you know in which direction this laser pulse was traveling because I have a GPS here it gives me the position of this platform I have also an IMU here which tells me the orientation of the platform as well as the accelerations by which this platform is moving so using IMU and the GPS it is possible for me to know exactly where was the aircraft while it was firing the laser pulses so that is possible for me as well as I know the orientation of the aircraft so if I combine the distance, I combine those orientations, I can generate the coordinate of the point in the ground in the same coordinate system which is being used by my GPS and simultaneously we are capturing the photograph also. The first flight for the aerial data capture is the calibration flight. The meaning of the calibration flight is uh, before we actually capture the data, we do a cal calibration for certain area and on that calibration we check the accuracy of the data so that my sensors are fitted properly if there are some misalignments we correct for that after the calibration the process of actual aerial data capture starts flight planning algorithms are used to determine the flying parameters such as height of data capture velocity of helicopter and scanning rate this ensures that the raw data is captured with LiDAR point density, accuracy and orthophoto resolution as per project requirement. The entire data is captured. Every day we would uh, check the quality of the data so that we are not missing any area. Our data is complete. And also every day in, in India it is particularly uh, the data would be uh, security, uh, no, sealed by the security officer in the field. After the data has been captured, pre-processing of the data starts. So I use the IMU information, combine that with the GPS information, so that I know now the trajectory, where exactly the aircraft had gone. So these are the pre-processing steps that we are doing. The LiDAR data generates ellipsoidal heights, but for undertaking design, data is required to be in main sea level heights, Hence, during pre-processing, the LiDAR ellipsoidal heights are converted to main sea level heights with the help of vertical control established using Survey of India benchmarks. So at this stage, the data are available as the last file. And also I have got the raw photographs. Then this particular data is again security verified. So then, whichever is the vital installation there, those are taken away. The rest of the data becomes available for me for further processing. After security vetting of the data, the post-processing of the data to generate the final deliverables starts. At this stage, the data points, they do not know what they are. Whether they belong to the field, whether they belong to the tree or the house or whatever. They are just coordinates, nothing easting an altitude. Then we run algorithms on top of this data. Those algorithms are able to separate the ground points in one layer, the vegetation in another layer, bigger vegetation in another layer, houses in another layer, transmission lines in another layer, and so on. So what we have now, we have so many layers. Also, using the digital elevation model that we have generated and the photograph that we have now, we create an orthophoto. So for complete area, I have now an orthophoto mosaic. Next step is using this information, these separated layers of different features, orthophoto, then we create the GIS layers. Because ultimately the client is interested in the GIS layers or they want the AutoCAD. The post-processing of data results in final deliverables of the project. These are bare earth digital elevation model of 1 meter by 1 meter grid. 
seamless ortho photo of the entire stretch. 3D topography map in 1 is to 2000 scale. Contours with an interval of 50 centimeters, cross sections, and plan and profile. Within a period of around a month, we could collect all data, and the processing took another two months. With the help of that, we could create a digital terrain surface uh, and digital elevation model, which has been used for actual design of the uh, various structures which is coming along with the, along the line. We have used the data collected for finalizing the location of foundations of important structures also. We could count the number of structures which are, which are going to be dismantled and which has helped us in finalizing the right of way, the requirement of land for the project. We have avoided highway build up area to the extent possible and we have tried to locate the foundation of the important structure in such a way that the least amount of dismantling is involved, dislocation of people is involved. It has helped us in finding the number of trees, counting the number of trees also, which has also accelerated our forest clearance process. At any point of time during the designing stage when we are in, in a discussion with designer, we just open the uh, details collected from LiDAR in the form of orthophoto and we can see the actual ground level and discuss the various pros and cons of different options of designs and then take the decision as fast as possible which otherwise would have required site verification for every options to go and verify the site whether it is feasible or not. We have found the LiDAR survey to be very comprehensive and fast. We can safely say that we have been able to shave off around six months in the total survey process and we have been able to deliver the ground terrain data with consistent quality which can safely be used for design and construction purposes.